most part, you know, uh, large organizations, if they're on a calendar uh, review basis, you know, shut down for 10 days to 14 days while everybody writes them to meet the deadline. Um, very little that's written is of any import to the manager. Most of it offends the person who receives it. Um, I'm, I'm shocked, actually, at uh, that the fact that that ritual still exists in many organizations, and very few of them ever deal with the future. You spend most of the time talking about the past, and very little talking about the future. You know, I advocate that if you have a good uh, operating system as a leader or a manager in your organization, it's almost, it's not dissimilar to an operating system that runs a computer. You know, the reason all this software works is because there's a very good operating system that makes everything work. Well, you should have a, a management operating system too. And um, if that's absent, what, what you end up with is, is performance appraisals that are meaningless to everyone. Um, if that's in place, you really wouldn't need a performance appraisal because John would know exactly where he stood. He, he would have been given that frequent focus feedback that I talked about. And you know, there, there wouldn't be a need to write anything down because all you'd have to do is refer to your notes from the last meeting and you'd know exactly where you stood with that performer. But that discipline and that rigor is, is absent in a lot of organizations. Charles Handy, thank you. He, uh, he talks about the idea of upside down thinking. And I really like that, it's contrarian. And if you think about what we did with Advantage is we did upside down thinking. Because most training companies will start with a a product and that product's usually there its genesis was with a custom project for a first client and that product looked and seemed pretty good and they said you know what we could genericize this is this product and go sell it to a whole bunch of other people so they started with product and then they moved to having a distribution system but what we did is we started with distribution because there was plenty as you know of product out there as there is today both in large and small, you know, boutique training organizations, all of whom had one problem, not enough distribution. So it was a very sort of simple upside down thinking thing. The other thing that training companies did is they hired salespeople, they paid them kind of low salaries and high commissions. And we said, we're not gonna hire any employees, we're gonna have franchisees, people who own their own business, because if you own your own business, you will work harder, you will be more passionate, you will deliver more value to your customers because you know that your mortgage payment is dependent upon the quality of the work that you do and this is what you're gonna do the rest of your life. So as a result, we had very little turnover. People that came, I mean, even if they had difficult years, which you know, you're always, as a salesperson, gonna have that down here, they would tie themselves, chain themselves to the desk because they were never gonna go back to working for somebody else because now they had their own business. So those two things really were kind of the, the secret sauce.